Log on to patreon.com forward slash Dane Calloway or paypal.me forward slash Dane Calloway to support me, my channel, and my content. Merchandise is now available at I'm just here to make you think.com. Ocio, brothers and sisters, relatives and free thinkers, let's begin this segment with asking a multiple choice question. What is Africa's original name? Is it A, Africa, B, Europe, C, Alkibulin, or D, Ethiopia? Now let's dive into the answer of this question a little bit deeper. There may be some of you who may feel as though your history teacher gave you the correct answer. Or it may be a few of you who feels as though some community leader gave you the best answer. Or there may be a small group who feel as though just because someone mentions it to them and it sounded about right, that it's a fact, meaning you approve his or her message. But the funny thing about approving someone's message is merely based upon how much you value that individual's opinion. I mean, think about it. Since history was written with maliciously biased motives and agendas in the first place, what makes a person actually buy into a stranger's opinion about their people's story? It is a process uncommonly known as a social engineering experiment, or C for short a scientific study conducted on groups of large populations manipulating direct and indirect thought of human behavior subsequently found within the origins of social science. Social science is the science of people or collections of people such as groups, firms, societies, or economies and their individual or collective behaviors. There are three disciplinary classifications of social science. Psychology, the science of human behavior. Sociology, the science of social groups. And economics, the science of firms, markets, and economies. More about that at a later time. But I did mention all of that to say this. According to what public school teachers are instructed to teach our children, is that the landmass known as Africa has historically been referred to as Africa and that the term Africa originated from the Roman word Tunisia. However, Tunisia is in fact a Roman word for Africa, but that does not mean that the term Africa itself originated from the Roman language. In fact, there is no supporting evidence nor any ancient form of historical documentation that clearly identifies its origin. Both words are still in use today, but Tunisia has always been a northern country bordering the Mediterranean Sea and the Sahari Desert, while the term Africa went from being rumored as the name of a small area originally known as the Kingdom of Tunisia then somehow managed to streamline its way into European folktales as the commonly used name of the entire landmass south of the Mediterranean Sea. What's very important to note here is that the people of what is known now as the continent of Africa speaks many different languages and bears multiple different cultures. So logically speaking, these different cultures and different languages would carry over from generation to generation historically, in which that fact alone should make you ask the question, so which of these multiple languages did the term Africa originate from, respectively? Well, let's go over some commonly used theories first. One theory is that the term Africa originated from some random Roman leader named Publius Cornelius Scipio, 
who was said to have led the charge during the so-called Punic Wars with capturing Carthage, a landmass which later became known as North Africa, allegedly due to Romans wanting all indigenous cultures and traditions of the region completely erased from existence. Shortly after capturing Carthage, Publius allegedly changed his name to read Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, with Africanus being a title for, quote, a wild beast, in which the term Africanus did not exist until it was placed in the Oxford Dictionary in 1983, claiming that it is a Latin word. But interesting enough, much older dictionaries of the Latin and Roman languages never carried such a word before. Another commonly used theory is that Africa was named after a so-called famous European explorer named Leo Africanus because he believed that the word Africa derived from the Greek word Afike. However, a theory is nothing more than just a simple idea that has absolutely nothing to do with the truth. There has even been reports of the word Africa allegedly deriving from the Latin word Afri, which refers to a group of people that dwelled in the outskirts of Carthage during the Punic era. However, there was absolutely no evidence to prove that the Romans derived the word Africa from Afri. But there is, however, a Latin word, Africa, which means Libya, or to cause an uprise. Most historians generally agree that the word Africa was first used to refer to a very small part of the northern region of Africa, and then some thousand years later became known as the name of the entire continent by European influencers. So with all of that being said, the origins of the word Africa have never been proven still. So for now, we can determine that option A can be eliminated as a verifiable answer to the original question. Now, we can immediately rule out option B as being a possibility of the original name, because Europe is truly not even a continent, due to the fact that it is literally part of the peninsula of Eurasia. Eurasia is described as the combination of both continental landmasses of Europe and Asia. But what history loves to tell you is that Europe and Asia are somehow two separate continents from a historical point of view, when in reality, they are still actually together as one large landmass with no signs of any physical separation between them. The only separation that does exist are the political constructs of governmental boundaries depicted heavily upon Western Europeanized history books given to Americans right along with their world map predictions. Did you know that Eurasia is currently being recognized as just one continent in most parts of the world right now? Are these history writers telling us the truth? I mean, think about it. Did you ever question your history teacher concerning the origins of where this information comes from that we are forced to learn and study in order to be judged and hope for passing grades? Now, this Anki Bulin term will be the correct answer for those of you who allowed a complete stranger to tell you that this theory or opinion in this case is a fact. Here's why. First, the term was never used in any historical context of creditable documentation to verify its existence prior to the early 1900s. In fact, the map of the said Alkibulin was just recently published by a Swedish artist named Nikolai Jesper Kajan in 2014. Nikolai named his map of Africa Alkibulin. 1260 AH, and if you noticed, he has the image of Africa placed in what would be considered an upside-down position, in which some of you would say that it's wrong. However, this would actually be the correct positioning for Africa due to any of the famous foreign explorers' visual prediction of the lands close to them at that time, logically thinking they would then be forced to draw the map right side up 
because it is based on where the individual was located. Now, there are plenty of misconceptions out there in the public about the term Alkibulin. Some would say that the word means Garden of Eden or Mother Nature, but realistically, the word never found its way into any colonial documentation or a dictionary of any kind for that matter. Now, some people would even go as far as saying that the word is of Arabic origin and it means the ones before due to some viral pseudo rumor that says the word is a noun that quote implies that it was used to refer to the original inhabitants of a place before the Arabs arrival end quote. And then the other half of that same rumor alleges that the word Alkibulin derived from the Arabic root adverb Qab, which means before. However, once again, there is absolutely no hard evidence to support this heavily campaigned theory. In fact, the word Al in Alkibulin is the definite article in the Arabic language that means the and the suffix land is used to express the plural form of an adverb in the Arabic language. So that leaves us with Kabu, which has no explanation or definition in the Arabic language whatsoever. But just before we rule out that the word Alkibulin is not the original name of the place called Africa, and before we rule out that the word itself is not an actual Arabic word, let's go over another popular theory that's being used right now. Yet another rumor implies that the word Alkibulin is an Arabic word that means the land of the blacks. And as silly as this sounds to real Arabs that actually speaks the language, some American followers of this theory would go to their graves with the belief that this definition is somehow correct and Alkibulin is a real Arabic word, when in reality, it is not. The Arabic word Zanj or Zanje was the derogatory term used to describe so-called black people, or rather the indigenous people of the Swahili coast and the surrounding areas of the southeast region of the landmass now known as Africa today. Also, this Arabic word is shared with many other languages that carries nearly the same meaning, like the Turkish word Zinsi or the Persian word Zengi, for example. There are no other traces of the origin of this word Alkibulin except in the Indonesian language. The word Bulin apparently means moon and in Malay, Kibulin means to the moon. So with all of that being said, we can determine that option C is not correct due to the lack of publicly verifiable evidence to support it as a possible truthful answer. Now, by the process of elimination, we can clearly see that the answer to this question would be option D. However, that will also depend on some key factors that are royally overlooked when considering what could be the original ancient name of Africa. Isn't it worth mentioning to everyone that's interested that the place that we know as Africa was once known by various different names throughout history? The truth is based on what makes logical sense to you when using your critical thinking skills. So if Africa has multiple different tribes of people that speaks different languages and historically has multiple different cultures, then trying to determine the actual original name of a said location would be very complex. Merely due to each language would have a different word and in most cases a different meaning and even pronunciation. What if a so-called African tribe never traveled outside of their homeland before? Would their native language even include a word for a place called Africa? Would they even know that they are being called Africans right now instead of by a word that derived from their native language? To me, or uh, when you say Africans, to me, when you say that, I think you speak in English. Uh, as me, as an African, when you say African, I know you speak in English. 
So first of all, black Americans in US, whatever, okay? Seems like you are a little bit confused about Africa and other stuff. Because when you say Africa, first of all, what you have to know that you speak in English. So if you have any question, the question will be like, what Africans we call Africa? Okay. Now you know that Africa is not only one country. Okay. Africa is many, many countries. Okay. But every country have a name that they call Africa. Every country. Okay. Every country have the name that they call Africa. Okay. Okay. For instance, what Ghana call Africa? Ghana call Africa a Bibli. Okay. So right now, if you tell my mom, okay, my mom is old. If you tell my mom, Africa, my mom don't know where Africa is. You don't know what is Africa. What is Africa? What is Africa? I'm just here to make you think.